Hey, good morning to a new day of streaming today. Day five. <clears throat> already, we have just uh, finished one week and we are already on Friday. And it's the fifth day in a row. We are getting back to our stream. Um, so let's kick off the day five with a little recap of the week or better said of the of yesterday. Um, so yesterday the struggle was quite real with uh, the panning and zooming around and the problems we had with the camera. But uh, I hate, had made some thoughts about the progress, about the pro approach. And today we will definitely fix it and uh, have a better clue what's going on there and what's the problem in general. And I promise we will get it fixed and we will get it, yeah, in a better, we will get it done in a better way. Um, we have some changes in head. We had some changes in the week, so I changed the microphone. I hope the quality is better than the first days. Um, for today, I switched the camera position on stream a little bit, so you can actually comprehend the debugging if I debug, because I realized yesterday in one of my videos on uh, YouTube that if uh, we are doing some debugging, the camera frame is actually overlaying over the debug configuration and over the variables so nobody can actually see what i'm talking about so i also hope that uh, this is improving the the quality of the stream a little bit um i was able to upload the youtube video much faster yesterday i have a new approach there to just download it from twitch and uh, just cut it uh, on my machine instead of waiting for YouTube. So also the videos there are, should be now uploaded a little bit faster. Yeah, so lots of uh, improvements uh, we have made already over the week. Uh, five days is already a good streak of streams, I would say. And um, things are getting more and more comfortable around the stream and the, yeah. They're talking about it so i think we're making there some progress and also in the game development itself we are doing some good progress and uh, yeah today i have planned a lot so let us not wasting time with talking too much um i switch my scene accordingly to the browser and then we get started with the small recap of day four as just said yesterday we try to implement the zooming and panning correctly on the time map and we created some more problems with that. So for today, I have uh, a completely new approach for that. And yeah, just let's just start and kick it off and I will explain it while doing that. So the first problem or the, the problem we have in general with the tiles is that our border constraints of our map and the camera isn't working as expected. Um, I have set a breakpoint here. Let's just uh, remove it. So what I want to have is to have the map drawn in the top left corner. And then I would like to move my camera around that to the end of the map with some space in between on the left and on the right, on the top and on the bottom. Um, for that, we need to uh, calculate how how far, how how's the width of our map in general, and then we need to adjust the uh, camera accordingly. The first problem we have, um, so we go back to the scene. The first problem we have, um, and I would go some steps back to fix this, is in the map. If I add a tile here for visual for visualization, the problem is. Our tile is rendered to the 0.0, .0 coordinate. As you can see here in the uh, preview, we have the 0.0, .0 in the middle and the tile is now overlapping to the top left, to the down left, to the top right, to the down right. And our camera is at the moment centered. So I would just uh, go to the top left point for now. And that's what it looks like, this uh, purple, border here is the camera object. So it's now sticked that the left top corner is on the 0.0, .0 coordinate. And as you can see, 
the tile is then just shown to a quarter because the three quarters are rendered out of the viewport. So if we now, we have now just some uh, other stuff ongoing here. <clears throat> we don't want that for now. Um, so let us just go back to the camera and just let us get some steps back in the ready function. We just command our position out and just doing a pass for now. And we go back to the to Wednesday and set the top left point for the camera. So what's the problem now? The problem now is if our camera is actually starting at the 0.0, .0 point, uh, we see that our map is not rendered correctly below the 0.0, .0 point. What I want or what I want to expect is that I can see the complete map. So I will show you that in the, uh, I will show you it right here. What I would like to have is I would move this by 128 down a little bit. I'm not sure if we take 128 or we took, well, because this is already the border. This is, yeah, so I would say we would like to have this. Or better said, we would like to have this. Yeah, so this is the starting point where I would like to draw the first tile because I would like to have the tiles inside the camera and down below the 0.0, .0 coordinate and not getting the tiles over to the left side or to the top right. And for that, we need to adjust our drawing accordingly to having the right starting point of the drawing and afterwards if we know we have the right uh, drawing of the tiles we then can do the calculation accordingly and then we won't have the problem we have had the last days because we can now uh, calculate it correctly so to achieve that we need to go back to our map where the creation tiles is actually happening and there we are parsing the JSON, we're creating the tile. And in the create tile, we are picking off the JSON image ID. We instantiate it as usual. We set the texture as usual. And here is now the magic happening. The magic is here happening at the tile position X because we're taking the tile position with the position we are in yeah we're taking the, the tile size multiplied by 0 0.75 multiplied with the pos and so we set the position x and we set the position epsilon and we need now to adjust that accordingly because what, what we would like to have is we would like to have the 0, x0 zero, and epsilon0 zero should be drawn in what I have done here. x should be one, two, uh, 1, 9, 2 and epsilon should be 1, 2, 8. This is what we want to have here. And uh, I will just leave another comment. The tile size here is, uh, let us check, 256. So if we now have the POS zero, what this means is we have now the position of zero and we multiply it with the tile size and we get to zero. And this ends up that our first tile will be half, nevertheless, always the zero. But we don't want the zero. We want 192. So in this case, we just add 192 and we redraw the whole scene. And as you can see, we now have 
what we want. We now have the tile here with the space on the border. So this is our, our starting border. And we need to add it to every X coordinate because we want to have the space on the left side. So to make it a little bit better, we would like to have a start drawing position. And this is a vector two and it equals vector two. And we have 192 and 128. This is the start drawing position. And we just replace it here with the start drawing position X. The problem I have right now with this position is I'm not sure why we do this one. So I would expect to have this, but then Ah, okay, it depends on uh, this one. Okay, so this is right. So this is now right for the left part of the left top. Now we want to have the same on the top part. So the left border is right. It is like we want to have it, like we had it here. And now we want to do the same on the on the epsilon so what we need to do here is also to have the start drawing position plus epsilon and then we have it right there why it's now looking <laughs> is because we have added a tile here for demonstration we need to remove it and now everything is like i would like to have it and we have also already the border applied to the right way so if we wouldn't take that into account and would use just a zero zero starting point then we have the problem that we are starting on the zero zero if we would like to have just the top left of the tile on the top left then we would need to go for, I think it's 2, 8 by 6, 4. What doing this is now, we are now just on the border. So this is the top border and this is the left border. And now we don't have any spaces. So maybe it's better to work without the spaces because it makes our calculation a little bit easier. And we need another one where we say, uh, start drawing. Or let's name it drawing basis and this will get another vector two so i split it now into two variables because then the calculation will be a lot easier for us so what i would like to have is a space of 64 on the on the left side and a space of 32 on the top side we also need to adjust this accordingly in here it makes a little bit more variables but i think the calculation in general will be better understandable because now we have our border here and the border is not just right because this also the spaces is 64 for both like that yeah that's right so now we have a 64 pixel on both ends so on the left side this is 64 and on the top side this is 64 with a, a little bit of spaces so this was just fixed for the drawing for now the panning isn't working correctly so uh, don't be scared of that yet now it's uh, just all about the uh, top left corner for now Oh, I'm sorry, I just have to take a small break. I'm back in a minute. Please stay tuned. I'm there in a minute.
so I'm back. Sorry for the interruption. I needed to take that break very fast. So <clears throat> the general problem we have here is that we have two different components, the map and the camera, which interact with each other and we need to adjust them accordingly to the panning. And uh, while I was taking the break, I thought about the spacing. The spacing I have done now is that we have the space on the left on the top for the map. But this is actually already wrong, I would say, because we want to have the spacing just for the view. So the spacing should belong to the camera instead of the map. So if we just draw the map, I would like to have the map drawn on the top left corner. I will just uh, show it on the top left corner. And then I just want to draw the map out there without any spaces. So I can be sure that the first tile is actually fixed on the top left 0.0, .0 coordinate. So like that, then we have the 0.0, .0 coordinate on top. And this is our first tile, which is on this map, actually no tile because it's uh, just a water tile. But this one is now drawn on the first one. And that gives us the possibility, if we have it like that, that the map is just rendered on the right sizes. And all the other stuff we now do within the map, uh, within the camera, because the camera is, uh, should be taking aware of the constraints. So what I would like to do now is I would like to take a screenshot right here. I hope it worked. Then I would like to fire up GIMP. Let me see if I actually can work with it. I'm not the, not the best GIMP user. Um, so I would like to cutting, 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 cutting. I would like to cut off this one. Oswald, do, do, do. can I just cut it? I just want to cut it, and I will want a new. No, close it, close it. Was not. Mm, yeah, he hasn't cut it yet. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. So we do it again. We want to print this one. I want to have it here right now. I want to have this one. I want to copy the. I want to. Uh, ah, so it's working like that. So what I would like to show you now is we have we now need to um, calculate the width of the map. And by that, I mean, we have the tiles here and we need to calculate it. Do we just have uh, some kind of. So this and this. This is this is really great. <laughs> These are 100. No, these are 256 pixel one tile. The problem we have is if we have in in an uh, uneven number of tiles, we just have the two, five, six pixels. But if we have another row, so we have a, a fine a two cells, then we are, oh, have overlapping tiles. And by that, we need to remove this uh, a quarter of that to calculate it actually correctly. So what we need to know is how big is the map on the tiles. So 
So what this means is, uh, let me let's set up another text line. If we have count x uh, count uh, cell x is zero, then we have two five six pixel. If we have and count cell x so this is one this is two then we have let me calculate it's two five six plus so we have four eight pixels and if we have count cell x three then we have yeah what do we have then then we have two five six then we have two five six and we have this one which is just the half so i would guess i would guess we have then five twelve so then let me see the calculator that is five twelve plus two so I would say we have 640 then. No, I don't want, I want to move this around. Can I move this around please somehow? So what I expect to have is 5, 640 here. 640 pixels. So, and now if I'm not totally wrong, then we have 48 divided by it's 102 and this minus 448 should also be this that's right so what we now need is uh, this is our width based on the count of the cells and we now need to uh, to create a formula out of that so we can calculate the width accordingly and for that I would like to introduce a new tool because I would like to unit test it and I have already um, installed for our project so let me see in the project <clears throat> I have already activated the plugin which is called GUT and GUT is used for unit testing in Godot and I have already created a test folder with a unit folder and we have already I have already written a script, but we can remove it because we will start from scratch. So we will create a new script, which is called test map. I created it in the wrong folder. Sorry. So we want to have it in the unit folder. So instead of extending node, we need to extend it from gut test and we can remove this body functions. Now we need a function to test and let's say let's uh, name the function test width calculation by map and we need of course to have i would say the uh, the map so let us say map is load load rest Press uh, assets, no scripts, no <laughs> sorry, scenes. We need a map scene for that. So, in the calculation, we can then say map instantiate. Oh, I think map new. Let us just quickly check the uh, Godot got documentation for that. I've just uh, looked into it a little bit yesterday. Um, but we will uh, take a look for now. We're creating the test. Um, this is the test cases, how it's work. This is how an object, we load the object and we do object new. Yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much it. That's right for it. So now we want in our test function. So uh, we say this is our map instance. And what we would like to have now is what I have told you so far in the screen. So we have our tile size, which is uh, 258. 
And now we would like to have a map calculation, which uh, we can say we write something like the map instance and we say calculate width and we give it the X count. So I want to, would like to do everything I have written here. Yeah, everything I've written here, I would like to have. So this is our expected result. So we do calculate with, with one, with two, with three. So for that, we need a function inside the map. Where we say func, let's get any test back, calculate with. And it needs in cell x, cell, no, count cell x, and it's an integer, and it returns something. For now, we can say count cell x. So the function is pretty simple for now, it's just a stop. So we have a function which is calculate width, it returns the count cell. In our test map, we create the instance now, and we say calc x. Now we can say asset equal, this is from gut again. And now we want to have, I just let me check, got and expected is the second one. So what we are doing is we do the calculation and what we are expecting now is this one. So we expect two, five, six pixels on this one. We expect four, four, eight on this one, sorry. Of course, we need to do asset equal as well. And then we have 448 here, and then we asset equal, and we have 640 here. So this is what we expect for our tests. So to be cool, we now run our tests. And it's saying new uh, is non-existent because I think it's instance. It's not load, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, sorry, sorry, it's uh, load res, ECN. And it's this GD script, yeah, I see, I see. Um, this is node new. I'm not sure if we can use new. Or we need to use instance. I think we need to use instance for that. So let us check if this is working. No instance also not. Invalid called new on packed scene. I'm man, why not? We have done it with preload. Tiazine, Tiazine, instantiate. So instantiate is the right one. Okay, sorry. So we just have to get use instantiate for a packet scene. So what we have done now is we created our first test and we would like to see our results uh, tested. So the test is running. We can see here the test is finished. The test with calculation. And the first one is failed because one expected equal to two, five, six, two expected to this. But this was, uh, yeah, we expected this result because we haven't had implemented the, the calculation width now. It's just a stop method which just returns what we put into it. And of course, one is not equal to two, five, six. So what we are learning here right now is test driven development. So what we are doing is we are writing a test which should fail. So in first place, our uh, test should fail and we would like to fail it because now we can start with the actual implementation. We could now take minor steps to just show you the approach. So for 
just for making some progress we could go into the map and we could now say instead of uh, taking the cell back i could just return 256 so now, now i know the first test will pass but the second will fail most likely so we check it out and we say yeah the first one is working but now we have the problem that they are not working uh, with the second test or the third test because we just implemented a hard-coded number which just matching the first one so we need to go back to our code and think about it and what we're doing now is we take the count cell and multiply it with the tile size so i would do this <clears throat> as first step now of course if i run i can see now we have the problem that that's the problem I set with the offset. If we have uneven numbers and even numbers, and now we need to come up yet now with, uh, yeah, with, uh, how to say it? With a solution. We need a solution now, how we can subtract these values and having a, a function which calculates in the right place. So, this is where now the thinking begins. And uh, this is what I showed you in this image. What we need to understand now is how we are actually doing the calculation behind it. We know the we knew the absolute numbers, but we don't know how to calculate it. So if I would say we have four four eight, I need a calculator. Where is the calculator? There. We have four four eight by two cells, and if I divide it by two, then we have two two four. But if we have on on three cells six by divided by three, it's another number. So. What this already shows us is that the even numbers and the uneven numbers aren't working accordingly. So we can't just do a multiplication because the multiplication wouldn't work with this, with this isometric offset uh, mathematics because it's, it's not is simply multiply, uh, multiplied by two or by three or by four, whatever, because we always have these offsets and we always need to take them into account. And this is what makes the whole mathematics behind these isometric uh, tile sets a little bit complicated because we now need to, to figure out how we actually uh, need to calculate it. Um, let us go back to here. If I take this and divide it by this, we have one, Nine two. So what uh, the number? Uh, let me just say the text. What the number is actually telling me is we have this plus this, and in this case, it's even more complicated because if we, if we have this by this, it's just this. So I think in this case, we have this by this by this. Mm -hmm. So this already gives me some clue. Let me make it a little bit bigger. So this is how uh, <coughs> the formula should look like it. We need in first place, the two five six, so it's it's not that e uh, not that complicated actually. This one was already right, so we need this tie size, tie size, tie size, and return it. So we run our test as uh, before. We are now on this one, and what we now just need is we need to add the count cell x multiplied with the tie size. And if we now run all the tests, we see it's still too much because, as I have showed you here, the tie size is this, but we need that. 
So what we need to do here is we take this one. And now if we run it, we have still a problem because now we still have too much. This is why testing is cool because uh, I expected it's now working, but uh, yeah, it's not. Because if we get cell one into account, I think what we need to do is if count cell X bigger than zero, we need to return the count cell X minus one and otherwise we need to return the tile size. So, and the cool part now of the tests is I can write the code and I can check with my tests now if the code is working. And as you can see, all the scripts are done. And we have two, uh, we have one test and one is passing and we have three assets and everything are fine. Uh, this count got it, 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 it. I don't know what the warning is about, but we don't care about the warning now. So what this actually does is now it works like we expect it. So the formula is pretty simple in general because we have the first tile which needs to be drawn with the maximum amount of the width which is going here and every tile which is coming afterwards because of the offset is just a seven by seven five dot seven five so it's it's three quarter of the tile size and this is actually what we have done with the calculation here so what i would like to do next is i would like to do the same thing on the on the height so let us test write the test calculation for the height also here we i would like to go uh, with test driven development again to instantiate to show you the approach a little bit more so what we would like to do is map instance calculate height with one tile and we expect something like that asset equal map instance map instance calculate I should write it correctly up there calculate height so what i have written here right calculate height too so these are just some some fake numbers right now i'm just taking here and then we run our tests again and the test is failing because calculate height isn't there so this brings us to the map and we go here and we say funk what is this yeah, it's right. Funk calculate calculate. I'm so bad at typing today. Uh, count cell epsilon, and then it's also an int. And for now, we also as a stop method just say we return the cell count, and then we go to gut again and run the tests. And the tests are failing again because we are just returning the number and the thing. Before we can actually set up the test, we need to go back to our image and see the height. The height is a little bit more complicated. So let us do another uh, text object. Because the height is just the half tile size. So count y1 should be 180. Yeah, it should be 180 because it's just this one and then we have always the half with the offset so i think it's uh, working the same way actually no it's not so we we need to do the same approach as we did before if we have one epsilon it should be 128 if we have oh, i hate it count 
epsilon 2, it would be 256. No, it's not. Sorry, I'm too far. It's uh, by 64. It's 292. Why is it? Because we are then in this line and it's this one. And if we have count epsilon 3, we are then back here and this is 256. So what we can hear, it also, so what we see here is it's, it's on the same, it actually works as same as the function before. We need to have the half tile size and always add the 64. So for every tile we get, we need another 64. So what we have, uh, can do now is our calculation. Calculation height, 128, this one is 19, and then as last thing, we would like to have it on this. So the tests are failing, we just uh, make sure it's failing, then we go into the map, and then we see it's actually the same approach as we have in the calculate with function. If we are greater than zero, we then return the tile size divided by two because we are on the height now plus count cell epsilon minus one multiplied by tile size divided by four and otherwise we just return tile size divided by 2. We run our tests now and everything is working as intended. So the tests are running through and this is the calculation for our map. So what we now need to do is to drink some coffee and to recap a little bit what we have done now. We have a test now which actually is able to calculate our map width and our map height and we just created with the image uh, some expectations how the width is calculated for our camera so what we want now is to, because these are all i just expected the width and now we need to do the real life example if actually the calculation is correct so what i would like to do now is to is to to create the constraints for the camera accordingly to our calculation process and let's just remove some uh, things so actually what we have done here before needs to be done now so let us comment this back and then just let's say set min map position and i would like to remove it completely for now i would like to remove everything we had so far i'm sorry because it uh, for now we we Take some steps back and just remove everything to here to the constraints because I would what I would like to do is starting from scratch again. And Adjust it accordingly. So uh, I don't want to do it with the stuff I had yesterday or the day before because I, we now have written the test and we want to get everything a little bit more structured and calculated in the right way because the struggle was so hard yesterday and it's not cool to work when you don't know what you're actually doing. So let us bring some silence into the chaos, some structure in it. So what I've done now is um what i've done now is i removed everything which sets up the position 
This allows us again to track around freely on the map and we don't have any border constraints as you can see. And what we now would like to add is the constraints for it. So what we need to do is to set the camera into these constraints. So we go back to the camera viewport I also, yeah, I just would like to remove that. So everything we have now is we have the panning and the max zoom. So we have the zoom steps and we have the panning and the event for it. I think also the zooming is for now working, but it's on the top left. So first things first. What I would like to have now again is on the camera. I would like to have it again on the drag center because I like to have the camera in the center instead of the top left position. What this does now is it uh, brings our camera to the center of the 0.0, .0 point at the beginning. But we don't want it because we need now to adjust the camera accordingly to the center point that we are going back into the, the top left corner. So, don't have time for you, I'm sorry. I don't have time for you right now. So, um, we need to go to the top left corner. By that, because here is the 0.0, .0 point, we need to uh, to add the viewport, the half of the viewport to the starting point. So let us just be, be real and just be easy. The ready position should be, uh, position X should be get viewport size X divided by two and position Epsilon should be get viewport dot size dot epsilon divided by two. So what we have now is we are back in the middle again. Why is this? Okay, this this shouldn't be the case. <laughs> I always like it. I I thought I had the right idea, and now I'm back to the. No, I'm not. Uh, what the fuck? So let us let us go back. Let us go back. Man, it's this it's so complicated to the fixed top left point. The top left point is right there on the 0, 0.0. This one is actually pretty right. Why is it I need to see it here? Top left and if I drag it to the center, then it's there. Fix top left, drag center. Fix top left, drag center. Ah, it was zoom. It was zoom. The zoom was setting on uh, a wrong number. So this was actually causing the problem. I was, uh, yeah, I was confused. So yeah, now we, <laughs> now we have it. <laughs> okay, this is what I would like to expect. And this is what we have right now. Um, we are now back on the top left point, but we have a centered map. This has the, uh, the advantage that the uh, zoom in and out is uh, accordingly to the, to the center point and not to the top left point. And we want to do it there. So what we need to do now, or what we would like to do now, better said, is, um, set this position as our yeah, how to call it it's our uh, it's our starting position so 
So in first place, I had named it set min map position. Let's stick to that. So the min map position. There's a function where we set the set min map position and we say min map position x. You can also do it like min map position equals vector two, get size, get position epsilon, get viewport epsilon, and then we have the var min map position, which is actually a vector two. And afterwards, we set the min map position as the position, and we are still on the same as we were done before. So this is pretty easy and it should also now work if we do the clamp. But for that we also need the we also need the max map position for now. And for that we need to go back into our map and there we had this one and uh, we have the camera and it's a say set max map position funk set max map position <coughs> um, and we get there the max map position And this is the vector two. And we just say max map position is a vector two. And we can just say the max map position is max map position. So we need to create a vector two for max map position with vector two. And this is just a setter function for it. And we just set it there. What we need to do here is we set the max map position and the max map position is uh, holding. Uh, what is this holding? It is holding both. And we would like, I would like to change it here because we now need to calculate the stuff. So what we are doing here is we calculate the width by the max map position x and we need to calculate the height by the max map position epsilon. Therefore our camera changed to, to width and height. And then we say this one is a vector two with width and height. So let us set a breakpoint here. And what we get now is we get the width of 1984 and the height of 704. Um, we are not knowing now if these are the correct uh, values. We need to test it. But uh, at least our test tests showed us that the calculation is right so far. So what we would like to do now is again to comment in this one and to remove that one. And by this, what I have done is I activated, reactivated the constraints of the min map position we set on the ready function and the max map position. And if everything is correctly now, we shouldn't go over the top left because this is our starting point and we should go to the bottom and go to the right. And as you can see, it's not working correctly. So why is it so? Why is it that it's not working correctly? This now has to do with the viewport. 
because what we are getting from the map is the map width and the map width is something like 1000 whatever and we can then go to the right and we, as you can see it's a half viewport too much why is it so because our min map position is started on the half size of the viewport so what we need to do is we need to subtract the viewport size x dot 2 on the width to get back into here and now as you can see it looks quite nice because we are now at the end of the map because this one is taking the viewport into account and we need to do the same for the viewport height with the difference that we need to add it instead of subtract it and then we have too much here because yeah that's uh, also yeah because i forgot to divide it by two and now we have done or well, we have achieved what uh, i wanted to achieve yesterday so let us recap a little bit we have what we have now done is we are calculating the right map width by the tiles we have with the correct formula we tested them with gut in unit testing so we know that the unit testing is working as expected we could also now if we would like to uh, write some tests for the camera to just back up uh, these uh, calculations i've done here with the viewport size we could back it up with some tests i'm not sure if you are interested right now but maybe to get some uh, practice we can do a test camera gd as well and uh, there we need to extend so we get used into the workflow so we also do this one and we write a func test max map position we then need our camera object here for that we load the res scenes scenes means where's the camera ah it's not it's the scripts just the, 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 this one yeah then we say, can say camera load this should be our actual camera no not load sorry new and then we have the gd script there the problem now is we will say, have to set the actual camera viewport dot size equals vector 2 let's take a fictional camera i hope this is working and then we can do um, something like asset equal by that and we can do actual camera actual camera set uh, on the camera we set the max map position and we give the max map position something like 300 300 and then afterwards we would uh, i must check expect what we got is the first one and what we expect so then we can say actual camera max map position x fictive number and another one actual camera max map position epsilon and another number so what would we expect here in the right case so for now we could just uh, do it and then it says invalid index on viewport because we don't have a viewport here because it's not a scene mm. 
Mm, it's not a scene, it's just a camera type of the map. Yeah, so this is the problem with, yeah, let, let us take the map. Could have done the camera as own component and then instantiate it. Let us try this one. So what I would like to do is to have uh, save the camera as a scene. We save it as a scene. And what we have done now is we have an own camera scene. And in here it's just uh, an instance. So then we can go back to there and then we can say, let's take a scenes, camera scene. Then we can take the instance. C8. I can't write that word. And then we can again execute it. And then why was it removed here? Uh, na, 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 na. And now it's uh, there. And then it says invalid get index viewport. because the viewport doesn't exist. Uh, it's a little bit of problem that we're actually depending on the viewport here. For that, uh, I think we can't have it in the, we can't have it in the test because the test is not uh, working accordingly. So I have to check out the documentation of GUT, how actually is this one done. But for now, we maybe can just say viewport new. Cannot be constructed as it's abstract. Is this one working? Invalid set index viewport. No, it's not working. Texture. Texture viewpoint. I'm just spinning around with the objects to actually see if we can get that working. Because for our testing on a map, we would need a viewport here to have that working. So get viewport is returning a viewport, which maybe is just a window. Yeah, that's a little bit complicated here right now because we actually need to have different things. I will just test this for now. But set index on camera GE with value type. No. It. I'm not sure if we can get that work. I don't think so. Uh, let us see. Note. Viewport get viewport and this is the magic which is actually godot is doing if we do add childs and stuff like that and in the test we can't do the add childs so for now i will put it on my list and we will re research it up later so let us delete it for now we just stick to the test with the maps and uh, yeah we just uh, do it the way we have it right now with our testing. So let's go on with here. We now have the, the centered camera and the panning is working. So what actually bothers us or is the problem right now, again, is the zooming. 
So let us try to get the zooming into account. Maybe it's also working already now because we have changed it, but we need to double check it. So we go for the zooming on 1.3. And as you can see, we are now on the wrong starting point. And this has to be because we need to adjust the size of the viewport accordingly to the zoom. So instead of uh, doing this, I would like to have the actual viewport size. So let us say something like fun get actual viewport size with zoom. And this one is then returning get viewport size. This is a vector two. And we need to adjust it with the zooming. So let us just see if the zoom is on one, the width is something like 1000. If the zoom is on 1.5, the width is, I would say 1000 divided by 1.5, no? 1000, one, thousand divided by 1.5. I think that's correctly. So what we need to do here is we need to divide it by zoom and then instead of get viewport we need to do get actual viewport size with zoom x and the same for the epsilon and the same for this one and of course also the same for this one let's start the scene up and we have invalid operands because vector 2 isn't able to divide it by this uh, i thought uh, the they have function for it We have sale, we have uh, blah, 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 blah. operators. Divides each component of the vector t by the given int. Okay, so it's dividing by the int and not with another vector two. Then we maybe need just to say this. And then it's working. And as you can see, the start point on the top left is now correctly also with the zoom. So if I just set the zoom for 2.5, for example, we are also on the top left. And if I set the zoom on the 0 0.5, it's also the top left. So let's go back into the 1.7, for example. Now we have the zoom and the panning. And the panning is already working accordingly for the left and right panning but not for the bottom panning that's interesting it's pretty interesting because i'm i'm astonished that already the left and right uh, panning is working correctly but the top and down panning is not working correctly because this makes no sense. Because I would have guessed if the width is set it accordingly, then also the top of the epsilon should be also adjusted accordingly. So the problem we have right now is the max map position epsilon, which is actually calculated here. 
And I don't understand why it isn't working right now. The width is working, the height isn't working. What is the difference here? So the min map position is there. Maybe the zoom is not correct. Let's double check it. Uh, actual zoom is get actual zoom. And we say actual zoom and actual zoom. Could be that this is a problem. So let us check the breakpoint. We go into the debugger, we get the actual zoom. And now we get this one for the actual zoom epsilon. And yeah, that's correct. So I need to go to the toilet one moment. I will take a short break and think about it. I'm back in a minute. So here we are again. Let us go back to the code. So something is wrong with the viewport right now. I get the actual zoom on the set max position with this and this. I would like to have the viewport also to just relaunch it. And then we can compare it. So we have a viewport with a 648 height. And we have a max zoom at the moment. No, we have a zoom. Where's the zoom? That on the camera by I17. And I would say we have uh, the calculator. So we have a height of this divided by 1.7. It's 381 as expected. So this is, looks right for me. But somehow it's not working accordingly. So let us just remove that one for now. 
let us remove the breakpoint. Even this is not enough. Actual zoom. This is this is really really confusing for me right now. So something. Oh, it's not size. Uh, something is wrong here. This is much too big. But this one looks correctly. Why I don't need? No, this is too much. This is too much. So actually we have a problem with the height zoom for now. It seems that the zoom on the height needs to be calculated differently than on the width, which for me at the moment doesn't make really sense. So we go back to the zoom of one. So for the original. And here is everything working as intended. So if we now go to let's let's go to the zoom of two. Because this is the easiest thing to reproduce it. So let us uh, take the viewport, multiplied with zoom epsilon divided by two. Too much. Less. Two less. So what I need to understand is why actually the height is not working the same way. As the width doing. I think it has something to do with the min map position. But I don't know why for the moment. So let us go back what I had actually. This is the actual zoom divided by two. And what I would like to do now is just to add the min map position epsilon on top of it. That's, that's not doing the trick. Ah, man. What is this? You need to understand. It. Get viewport plus viewport size epsilon multiplied with the zoom epsilon minus min map position epsilon. too much divided by two this one is this one now seems right for me
So let us again add this one. So this one was seeing right for me. And yeah, that's right. And let's go for another zoom level. And we check. Damn it. It's not right. Ah, oh, man, we have already different outcomes for different things. So what I would say is we have a wrong calculation for the height, <clears throat> unfortunately. There's something off. So I would say the height calculation isn't correct. But actually it can't. God damn it. Because on a zoom level of one, everything is working as it should. We are ending at the end of the tile and we are ending of the end of the... We start right here. So let us uh, shut up some, uh, an editor. We need to understand it. First, I would like to have uh, the the numbers which uh, we are working here. So we set the camera position, which is epsilon um, count cell epsilon is ten. So we have ten epsilons. Then we have a max map position, or better said, a height with 704 pixel, which is already quite interesting. Because I would say, go back to our test map, if we calculate the height, asset equal map instance calculate height 10 in my opinion it is how we implemented the function come on where is it there is it so we have 10 so normally it should be 1 24 plus 9 multiplied 64. Completely wrong. We have 9 by 64. It's 576. 576 plus 704. It's actually correct. So our test would say 704 and that's uh, what we get here. Yeah? Yes, the test is correctly. So 704 is right. This is the height we get. Let's start it up again. So So let us think about We have the map, which is 700 and four pixels height. And we have a viewport, which is 648.
on Zoom 1. So the max position for the X should be seven o four minus six four eight. So it should be fifty six in this case. Uh, let us go over it and then we have a max map position of 1028 1028 1028. I just hard coded here to see where it is. 1028 is right there. Because now the epsilon coordinate is 1028 plus the viewport. then the height couldn't be <laughs> I have no idea I have no idea what I'm doing here why is the height we are getting here just 704 I mean, the map couldn't be 704. Then it would fit into the complete viewport. But this isn't the case. I mean the max map position makes sense. Let's go back because the width, the max map position. No, the width is once no width 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 is one nine eight four pixels. So something is wrong in the height that I can already say. So this one is <coughs> the max map position. Max map position is once four. This means our viewport. Restart it to see the viewport is one. I have two picks. So if I calculate the half of the viewport, it's five, seven, six pixel. This is the half viewport. And now if the max plus five, seven, six should be the width. That's correct. 
So, and we actually would need the same for the height and the height is somehow not correct because the max map position, max map position height, restart it, is, let's go over, max map position height is 1028 pixel. And the viewport for the height restarted is 648 pixel. The half of it for the center is 648 by 2, it's 325 pixel. So the height would actually be 10,028 plus 3.4. This should be our height. <laughs> but I actually don't understand why it's working. I don't understand why it's working if the height is completely off because the height isn't right. The calculation. I think the problem is this one. No, no, our test should fail, of course, because they are expecting, but this is what I would uh, assume that it's 1000, what was it now? 35, I want 352, so let's remove them and rerun the test and then it's not equal, it's 408. I mean, of course we can go there and set it, but it's not the correct way to do it. Also the problem is if we would like to run the map now, we remove the breakpoint and then we could just do too much scrolling because the height is not right. So why is it calculated differently? So this is 1000. This height, what is now the height? But I think the height is now correctly. Because the height is now by 1400. I think that's right. What we need to do is, I think, minus the viewport actual zoom epsilon divided by two. Breakpoint left. So I think this is the correct way. Because we need to remove the viewport on the height. And the height was wrong calculated before. Let us double check it by another zoom level. Ah, we've got it. So on the bottom we have now a little bit more space because the tile goes to the end. What this means is, uh, or what, what I like to do there is, to adjust the calculation height a little bit by by 
let's see. After tires four. I think it needs to be tire size divided by four minus tire size divided by four. Mm -hmm. And then we go back to the one zoom. And then we go into something like a 0 0.8 zoom. Oh. Isn't it great how fucking good it's now working? So, but we need to adjust the tests. One, three, four, four. So, just to back the tests up a little bit, I would like to have map instance uh, calculate height on one pixel. I would assume on one cell that we have that we have the tile size minus one. No, that was wrong. I want to start it. Cut. So. That's actually what we would like to test here. <sighs> so this was uh, releasing. Relieving. So now the zooming works with the panning. So we, we achieved that as, as promised. As promised, we are now able to set different zoom levels which we actually want. And then we have the panning and the constraints of the borders are set accordingly. What we now need to adjust is if we zoom in, or better said, what's the problem now? The problem now is if we zoom out, the constraints need to be adjusted on the zooming. So we have the input for the zoom in and the zoom out. And afterwards, what we need to do is to adjust the max position. By the actual zoom, yeah. So to achieve that, we need to go back to our map and uh, say we set the initial max map position. Now we have done it before. And we go to the camera, we set max map position, we say function set initial max map position with int height int. Therefore, we say for initial max map position is what I would like to do now is I set the initial max map position. So for that we need to do the set max map position. So this one is not there. What we need to do here is vector two width and height. afterwards we call the set max map position which then is actually taking the zoom into account and then the zoom is always generated by the initial max map position which we need to set up here as a vector 2 so 
what's now vector not found because this needs to be vector two. David, rerun. No breakpoints, please. What's up? Don't want breakpoints. Invalid operands, vector two and float operator. Yeah, that's right, because this is of course X and this is of course Epsilon. So we are here and this is working. If we zoom in, it should work now as well, but it doesn't. Why not? Because we don't adjust it for now. So what we need to do now is we need to set max map position after zooming. Set max map position. This is updating our constraints accordingly. And then as you can see, the constraints are written here, but not there. Yeah, we also need to adjust the min map position. This is the Okay, that's interesting. So we need to adjust map positions by zoom. So what this means is we say just do set max map position by the actual zoom. And we also need to set min map position with the actual zoom. And we relaunch it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We go in for 2.5. That's right. That's right. That's right. And we zoom out. And there we have a little bit of problem. They're zooming too large. It's actually not working. <laughs> yeah, here bugging. So let us debug this one with the. I would say zero dot f no, that's too less zero dot five zoom. So what we achieved right now is. Ah, <clears throat> uh, what we achieved right now. Let me see. The panning is now working in the right constraints <coughs> for the zoom in. On the zoom out, we have another problem because if we are going too small, the constraints are not working anymore. And this is what's happening right here. Because it is so small that I would. Expect that the min position, maybe we just have to change this around. I think what's happening here is that we have a max position, which is <laughs> which is smaller than the min map position. And this actually can't happen. And that's the problem why we have the shifting right there. So to fix that one, I would say 
we can't go smaller now let, let's re, let's re uh, check it we can't go smaller with the max map position on x as the min map position so what we need to do is we take max let me see the function max uh, gives the max value yeah that's right so we need to do this and now and remove the breakpoint as you can see we can't go over there And we have the same problem with the epsilon right now. So let us also debug this one. Uh, the epsilon has the same problem because the max map position epsilon No, this isn't the case. Do we have the problem then? Broken here. that's fine okay so let us go one 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 more out so let's go to 0 0.4 yeah and on the first pull we can then hit the breakpoint and then we can see if we have the same problem here and i think so that also the epsilon is here a problem so i would say we need to adjust the code accordingly to the other one that we also say the min map position epsilon is right there let us take care of the breakpoint so this is not working so the problem right now is that when i zoom out i am able to zoom out without the right borders so the dragging and the panning is correctly but the problem is that when we zoom out we are not on the top left that's the last thing well oh, it's fucking snowing a lot that's the last thing i would like to uh, improve now that if we are zooming out this is this one and we adjust the positions by zoom that i would like to set the set minimum map and here i would like to set if position x is smaller than min map position x then position x should be min map position x and if position epsilon is smaller than min map position epsilon then position epsilon is min map position epsilon so what this just should do is when i zoom out it always locks me on the top left so i can't go over there you see if i zoom out it is just sticking over there so everything is working correctly here with the zoom out and this but we can't go further than that it's sticking to that but somehow it's not always working correctly but i'm not sure if it's really needed for now I think it's it's a, it's an edge case because normally yeah we would just have the zoom on one and then if we go back so far okay the panning is then broken of course uh, min map position x and min map position okay so i would add it 
because then we have at least I mean map position epsilon we have at least the uh, uh, panning fixed and we, it's a little bit weird but the panning is fixed for now but as I said I think it's an edge case because in the normal thing I would say this one is already too far yeah I, I'm not really sure how much uh, zooming should be able for the camera that is actually a point we should think about because uh, yeah it makes me uh, now a little bit concerning about it because of course I would like to implement the zooming and everyone should be able to play at that zoom level you would like to play and the general question is if I say this is the max zoom level how much uh, or how should the map be represented and now we are coming back to our problem with the camera we are actually into it because the map is rendered on the top left to the top right that's fine but actually we would like to have a border around or better said a space around the map and this one maybe it should go for half of the camera size so that it's be able to center the map always so let us start up the map again so the top left is now on the top right uh, on the top left of the map and the camera should be maybe again focused on the zero that zero coordinate or as the as the start point so maybe ah, it's so cool we we made so much progress today with that stuff and now i come back with the with the implementation that it was starting actually but i think it's it's correct because we need to have the min map position and actually i'm now putting the camera on the on the top left corner but that shouldn't be the const uh, that should be the viewport position not the min map position so what i would like to achieve now <laughs> is this should be the position the starting position but the min map position should be zero zero so what this does now or should do now is that we again start on the position of we've looked at but we are able to zoom or not to zoom we are able to move our constraint with the border of that and I would also like to do this on the bottom and corner. <laughs> so what this maybe means is that we actually don't need to put in this accordingly. And we didn't, don't need to actually put in the actual zoom at all it makes actually our code a lot easier because now we are able to drag around always a half of our camera size in each direction and if we go smaller the same should happen and now we have the possibility to always drag half of our viewport around even if we are completely dragged out and when we are dragged in we also have this so yeah that was actually quite cool we could <laughs> we could now do our 
code a lot easier without actually doing much. So we can also now clean up the code a little bit because we now have the min position, which is the zero zero vector. So we can just say the min position is never changing. Sorry, because it's a vector two. I'm fascinated by the progress I've made or the, the figuring out what we have now because we can just leave the complete min map position code be aside because this is not bothering us anymore because the min map position we don't need to adjust never ever because it's always 0, 0.0 .0. it's 0 we can't go further than 0, 0.0 and this is we can't go there even on zoom in or zoom out or whatever. So we don't need a min map position at all. We just need to calculate a max map position accordingly to the viewport. And that made our whole code now so much more, so much easier than it was. As you can see, for the min or the set max map position, we also don't need the zoom anymore because the max map position is uh, working separated from the camera. And this also means that the max map position is always the initial map position, which is also not anymore depending on the actual viewport. So we also don't need to adjust the maps sizes anymore. I'm just, I'm just astonished how this is working now so easily. And why have, had I done all the math before? Because I was using the camera object actually in the wrong. Yeah, actually wrong. And now it makes the whole code so much simpler without adjusting anything. And now everything is just working fine as we would like to have it because the camera is handling itself. As you can see, and we don't have any problems now and we have uh, so much simplified our code. So the actual zoom, we don't even need the actual zoom. Yeah, even, even this function can be completely be off because the starting position is just get viewport. So I, I'm questioning myself at the moment because we, we have done so much work with all that mathematics stuff and now it shows off that all the stuff for the mathematics isn't needed at all because the position for our camera is just the center. It's just the first thing we do is we set the position to the top left that we start the map on the top left and all the other thing is just working accordingly by the Zooming and not zooming and zoom in and zoom out and everything is fine. And the camera is just handling it well by itself. And so I think that even this, because the max map position is set once and it's the width and the other one is that, so we also don't need this anymore because this also can't not happen anymore because we just set it to the relative position and also that is just can't happen anymore <laughs> we just set all the values once like they should be and so we have the min map position which is uh, 0, 0 0.0 and we have the max map position so what i would like to do uh, is because this one i hate a little bit so i simplify the code the initial we don't need anymore and we just say on the uh, we change the function name and say function set set camera 
boundings and there we get the width int and the height int and then we have the min map position we set to 0, 0.0 and we have the max map position we set to this one and then we remove this function and set camera boundings to the map accordingly where we calculate it and then we have our camera boundings and now we are finished with this topic so it took me all the day right now uh, today all the time today again but now we are finished <coughs> we can now finally complete this topic and work with another topic on the next week so let us do a recap before we actually get uh, finished for today we are done with the panning and it's working flawlessly we have done with the zooming it's also working flawlessly um, for that we have simplified our code now a lot we have just the camera boundings which is the set it to 0, 0.0 which is the center point at the start point and we have the max width and the match max height which also defines the end point of the map so the uh, i will just illustrate it on the 2d the min map position is the 0, 0.0 and the max map is this one and the camera is just like that <laughs> moving around this one so we always have the half viewport as bounding so this is what we have done here so we have the camera bounding then on the panning we just uh, do our position of the relative position and we clamp it between our boundings and so we are able to be in the boundings on the mouse button left we just do the releasing and the pressing for the pan start and panning off event for just uh, create a panning event and on the mouse wheel we have to zoom in and zoom out what i would like is to improve the zoom code accordingly because uh, these are two lines maybe we can make it uh, a little bit easier in the future so another uh, thing we have achieved today is we have right written our first tests with the map size i also uh, can refactor here a little bit because we don't need the map size <coughs> um let us see if it's working always if you uh, change something on the test always of course run them on t and see if all <laughs> still passing because this is uh, what tests are about and they should be backed up so we have the, done the calculation on the map for today on the calculation width and the calculation height which actually just doing to they are they are just there to calculate our camera bindings so we give the camera the, the the width of the map and the height of the map and therefore we have our bindings so i would say we are good to go to cover the next topics on for the next week let's just uh, get the stream to an end with uh, the codex it was twitch day four it was yesterday there we couldn't achieve everything that's no problem but today we had day five on day five we posted it on the stream we changed the drawing to the top left corner instead of the zero zero so our first tile is now in the top left of zero zero and the c we worked out the panning there without border spaces then we get the panning and zooming working up correctly we calculated the line width and do some unit testing with gut we have done it here so we calculated how much we needed I can also close this and change it i'm sorry uh, we calculated it and we have the written the unit tests for it and the unit tests are good and what we unfortunately not uh, started today is the implementation of the map objects but that's uh, fine for now i would mark this card as done we still let it in here for our recap on Monday and let us do as last step for today I would like to create a card for day six which will be on Monday I hope you will then rejoin us on Monday and uh, 
see how we progress through. Because we finally get the zoom and panning correctly, we will implement add uh, map objects and units to our tile map. Now add map objects, placements and units to our tile map. So these are the next steps I would like to do with you on Monday. So what I would like to do is I would like to start with the implementation of placements. Start with the implementation of map objects and units, just as a, some scribble here. We will see how much we can actually achieve of that of day six, but that's actually what I would like to make there. Um, a big problem I have for now, or we have in general at the moment, is that the two hours is pretty short and I don't achieve that much as I would like and our planning, our project planning is a little bit lacking because I think we need to document a little bit more. Um, we are not working so much in codex right now and uh, I work a lot. Uh, constraints are not failing, for example. Unit test use pictures. And down, so yeah, that I've done, I've done this. Um, so we need to make sure to get our project planning also a little bit adjusted accordingly. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm pretty happy with the outcome of the first week. Of course, we do a small recap on Monday again for the last week. Um, I think we achieved a lot in the first week. This Dreams are getting a little bit smoother. Sometimes it's still a struggle, but uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it so far. And I hope uh, to become some, uh, to get some feedback from you if there is something I can improve. Otherwise, we will be back on Monday and start with the further implementation. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the, with the goals or with the success we have so far. And uh, we will get uh, back on Monday. So have a nice weekend and do what you like. Bye-bye.